The Pentecost HX-1 Hoppycopter was one of the most ambitious and technically daring attempts to create a truly portable, one-man helicopter in the early history of rotary wing aviation. Its story reflects both the optimism of post-World War II engineering and the severe practical limits of ultralight vertical flight. The project began in 1944, when Horace Pentecost, a mechanical engineer working at Boeing, started designing a helicopter that could be worn like a backpack. Pentecost believed that individual soldiers could gain unprecedented mobility if they were able to lift off vertically without runways, transport aircraft, or parachute drops. His solution was a compact system powered by a small engine driving two coaxial counter-rotating rotors, eliminating the need for a tail rotor and simplifying torque control. By late 1945, Pentecost completed the first prototype, designated Model 100 HX-1 Hoppycopter, and left Boeing to found Hoppy Copters, Inc. The HX-1 weighed about 41 kilograms, 90 pounds, and used a 20 horsepower engine to turn 3.6 meter, 12 foot wooden rotors at approximately 440 revolutions per minute. The entire aircraft was strapped to the pilot's shoulders with metal arches and canvas harnesses. Directional control was achieved through an overhead cyclic stick while yaw control relied on differential collective pitch between the two rotors. In practice, the backpack configuration proved extremely dangerous. The rotating mass created strong gyroscopic forces, making balance difficult. If a pilot stumbled, the spinning blades could strike the ground, producing lethal debris. Only tethered hops were attempted. The HX-1 never made a true free flight. Recognizing the risk, Pentecost abandoned the backpack concept and redesigned the aircraft with landing gear. From 1947 onward, the Hoppycopter evolved into seated versions known as models 101, 102, 103, and 104. These were effectively miniature helicopters, still using coaxial rotors but mounted on lightweight frames with tricycle landing gear. The Model 102 achieved over 100 captive and free flights and demonstrated stable vertical lift though pilots reported extremely sensitive controls and severe disorientation due to the lack of a cockpit reference frame. Despite interest from the British Ministry of Supply and evaluations by military organizations, no production contracts followed. By the early 1950s, larger civil helicopters from Bell, Sukhoi, and Hiller dominated the market. Financial disputes forced Pentecost out of his own company, and later revival attempts failed. The original HX-1 was donated to the Smithsonian Institution in 1952 and survives today as a museum exhibit. Although commercially unsuccessful, the Pentecost HX-1 Hoppycopter remains a landmark experiment in ultralight aviation and a precursor to later personal rotorcraft concepts explored decades later.